Hi, I'm Tom Smith. Congratulations on your purchase of your new Nautilus DMC metal detector. Your selection of the Nautilus DMC will enable you to many hours of fun, adventure, and hopefully the discovery of many valuable finds and artifacts. Today I'd like to share with you some helpful tips in plain terms that will help you use your Nautilus DMC metal detector through a better understanding of how your detector works. Today's metal detectors are more complex than ever. Through time, many features have been added. It was only 26 years ago when discrimination in metal detectors was first introduced by Jerry Tyndall, the maker of your new Nautilus metal detector. They certainly have come a long way since then. Through development, many features have been added to make the DMC perform better. Ferrous and non-ferrous discrimination, coil balancing, and variable power output. By doing this, tuning your DMC can become quite intricate. That's the reason that we wanted to share with you some tips and recommendations to help you understand your machine better. Your Nautilus DMC metal detector is built with the latest advanced features available today using the induction balance method. Correct setup and tuning is essential for its proper operation. Your familiarity with the controls and the characteristics of your new machine will help you understand how it works and help you find more artifacts and treasures. During this video, I'll take you through each step of tuning and balancing your machine. I'd like to suggest that you have your machine in front of you as we discuss the various functions, setups, and features of your new machine. And I'll give you a chance to go get it right now. So we'll be right back. Your DMC uses four 9-volt alkaline batteries. We recommend using Mallory Duracells or rechargeable nickel cadmium batteries. You can expect around 15 hours of use from them if you use your machine continuously. It's a good idea to carry an extra set of batteries with you in the field and rotate them after about three or four hours. This lets your batteries refresh and gives you the benefit of having fresh batteries all day. Battery life is also determined by how high the volume settings are on your headphones. When the batteries become weak, you will hear a continuous tone in your headphones. Whenever you need to replace your batteries, always make sure that the machine is turned off before installing new ones or changing them. Headphones are standard equipment with the Nautilus. They plug into your machine right here into the stereo jack plug. The headphones also should have volume controls for each ear and should also have a stereo mono switch. The stereo mono switch can be used in either position. When you use it in the stereo position, the ground balance tone will be heard in one ear and the ground reject tone will be heard in the other. When the headphones are used in the mono position, you will hear the tone simultaneously in both ears. To set the volume on the headphones, turn the volumes of both knobs all the way off and then turn them both on by one fourth of a turn. Refer to your manual for details on which settings work best with the stereo and mono modes on your headphones. Let's take a closer look at the controls of your new Nautilus metal detector machine. Next, we're going to discuss a very important facet of your machine, your controls. A, shown right here, is your discrimination and ground reject discriminant switch. B is your power on and off switch that we showed you earlier. C is your automatic tuning switch up front. D is the discrimination Venera dial. It varies the amount of rejection to unwanted targets such as nails and bottle caps. E is the, the sensitivity control. It controls the sensitivity for the discrimination. F is the tune control. It sets the threshold volume for the ground reject balance in regular modes. G is the ground balance Venera dial. It's used for varying the amount of ground rejection. H is your sensitivity control for the ground balance mode. It varies the amount of depth of the ground balance in regular discriminant modes. I is the stereo headphone jack. Plug your headphones in here. Here's an important one, J. This is your power switch right up front. K, 
These are your two controls called R and C, down front on the bottom. That stands for resistance and capacitance. They are for setting the search loop balance. We'll talk about that next. L is the search loop balance on and off switch located in the middle of the machine. M is the battery charging jack just below the on and off. We'll discuss the applications of these controls later in this video. An induction balance metal detector is at its best when the transmitter and the receiver coils have perfect balance. The two main factors that affect the balance are temperature and power. Therefore, to assure a perfect balance in any circumstances, there are two controls marked R and C right here. They are used to adjust the search loop balance. We'll call it SLB for short. A variable power control switch here is for adjusting the transmit power. This enables you to choose the power for the ground type. The voltages can be adjusted anywhere from 6 to 44 volts, or high, medium, and low. The lower voltage is for highly mineralized ground, and the higher voltage is for good to moderately mineralized ground, or slightly trashy areas. Sounds like my backyard, for instance. I'd like to mention some of the earlier models, like this one, which has a three-way power switch instead of the newer variable control switch. The switch marked SLB, which is located in the top right here in between the two sensitivity controls. It must be turned on when any adjustment is made to the R and C controls. The search loop balance adjustment must be made first before any other adjustment is made. By the way, when making these adjustments, the search loop must be held away from any metal object, of course. That makes sense. When you're making the R and C adjustments for the first time, use a low transmitter power setting of, uh, let's say, a number six. After becoming familiar with the adjustments, higher power can be used. Also, a note, it doesn't matter which control is set first, since both controls are adjusted in the same manner. Now that you are familiar with the transmitting power adjustment, the search loop balance function, and the R and C controls, let's look at the procedures for setting up the search loop balance. These instructions are also in your owner's guide, by the way. Okay, here we go. Now pay attention. First, set your sensitivity control to, let's say, number three. Then let's get the transmit power control to six. Okay. Set your auto-tune switch to off. That's right here. All right. Set your R and C controls to the 12 o'clock position. Then tune your SLB switch to on. Now push the red button, hold it in, and switch the unit on. Adjust the tune control here until a low tone can be heard. Now release the button. That wasn't so bad, was it? Next, I'll turn either the R or the C switch to the left or right, whichever I've chosen to work with, until the tone disappears. Now push the button again to bring the tone back. Turn the control to the same direction until the tone disappears. Press the red button again to bring the tone back. Follow me so far? Do that procedure until the tone no longer disappears but just starts to rise. When you turn the control left and right, you will hear a small null in the volume. After the null has been reached on that control, simply repeat the process again for the other control. Once the dip or null has been reached on both controls, switch the SLB switch to the off position. This wraps up the SLB adjustment. That will become second nature once you do it a few times. Here's a little tip too. On a cold day, repeat the procedure every 15 minutes for the first hour or so when you first get out into the field. Remember the two things that affect the coil balance. Temperature and power. That's right. This gives the unit a chance to get used to the temperature and conditions. Now that we've set up the search loop balance, we're ready to set up the ground discriminant and ground balance mode. You would use this method for general hunting using both modes. 
by following them closely, you will achieve perfect ground balance in every location that you hunt. It's very important that your DMC is ground balanced correctly. You'll want to refer to the owner's manual on pages 3 through 7 to set it for the type of hunting that you are doing. Once you've done that, follow these procedures. Pause the tape at this point and then return it again once you've made these adjustments. Since the ground reject discrimination mode relies on the ground balance signal, special care in tuning the ground balance must be taken. Since there is no tuning to the ground reject discriminant mode, no tune will be heard until a target is passed. Here we go. First press the red button. Switch the unit on and turn the con tune control to a clockwise direction until a comfortable tone is heard in your earphones. Now release the button. Everyone still with me? Now let's lower the coil towards the ground to check to see if it gets louder or lower. If it gets lower, increase the ground balance of the narrow dial to 61. Press the red button once and release it. Raise the head again and once again the head towards the ground. Okay, if it stays steady and doesn't change, the unit is ground balanced properly. And if it still gets lower, increase the Venera dial to 62. Then raise, press the button, and lower again. Remember, lower, increase. Higher, decrease. It should be balanced now. After ground balancing, you might want to decrease the ground balance sensitivity from 10 to around 3. This stabilizes the unit, which I recommend doing. Also, if you happen to change locations, you'll want to rebalance the unit again. That was a lot to remember, but it's really quite simple once you do it a few times. There are a few other ways to ground balance your machine, depending on how you prefer to hunt. Refer to your owner's manual for instructions on seashore hunting and for setting for regular discrimination and ground reject discrimination mode only. The main thing is to set your search loop balance first, then set your ground balance. Once these setups have been completed, you're ready to start hunting. I like to sweep mine back and forth about two or three feet swing. Staying close to the ground as possible and maybe uh, possibly trying to not touch the ground. I'm sure it will become second nature after a few times out in the field. Remember, always cover your holes. Always get permission from the landowners and never hunt on state or federal property that's posted. Remember, fines can be rather stiff for hunting on these properties. I'm Tom Smith saying goodbye for now and happy hunting.